So the tracking mount you've seen in many of my recent videos is this one. It's called the Skywatcher Star Discovery Pro mount. And I keep it permanently on board the aircraft, so it's always available when I'm away on work trips. Now, it's a great mount, very accurate, very reliable, and it has the ability to run off internal batteries, so it's quite portable. It's fine when you've got your own aircraft and you can fit it in the cargo hold, but it's probably just on the heavy side if you're trying to transport it via commercial aircraft. So I'm always looking for better options. Now, this particular mount is this one here. It's Skywatcher Star Discovery Go-To Mount. Okay, its uh, weight is 6.3 kilograms. You can see on the site there, and it has a payload capacity of five kilograms. So good unit, a bit on the heavy side. As I was browsing the Astro Pete's website the other day, I came across this unit, the Mini AZ Wi-Fi mount, which also has a five kilogram payload capacity, but it only weighs 1.3 kilograms. So it's a fraction of the weight and it still has the same payload capacity. So I put in an order. This was just on Tuesday night. I put in the order through the Astro Pete website and they were good enough to get it in the post yesterday and it arrived today. Now this is a brand new unit and I cannot find a single video review of this unit on YouTube so I just decided to make one for the benefit of others. So there's the new unit on the right hand side, the Skywatcher as GTI mount and it's about the same weight and size as the Skywatcher Star Adventure mount which is a mini equatorial mount. Now this one can be powered by internal batteries. It will take eight AA cells or you can supply an external 12 volt power source to drive it that way. It can be operated via Wi-Fi through an app on either Android or iOS or using a standard SynScan hand controller which I will show you later in the video. So this uses the standard Vixen mount which can be fitted with many different accessories, an L bracket for using a DSLR camera and that's how I'm going to be using it with the P900 or even a small telescope and it comes with two clutches. This is for the altitude axis, you can just tighten it up or loosen it and move it manually like that. Similarly on the azimuth axis that just bolts into the uh, top of the tripod and your clutch is just on this side when you loosen that clutch you can just turn it by hand. Now this has what we call freedom find. It has dual encoders so once you actually align the mount, do a star alignment or, or a solar system alignment for daytime use, you can loosen the clutches and just move the mount in both axes by hand without losing your sink on the star. So then just tightening up the clutches you can use the go-to feature again and it will not have lost its orientation. So yeah, really neat unit and I'm looking forward to trialling this over on the west coast of Australia later this week with the P900. So this is everything that you get in the kit and it comes in this long box on the left hand side. There is the tripod itself, an accessory plate which fits between the tripod and helps stabilise it. There's an extension head that connects to the top of the tripod. You only need that if you're going to be using the mount with a telescope. It's not necessary if you're only using a camera, as I will be doing. And there's the motorized head itself. Now I'll look at that in a bit more detail shortly, but the benefit of this mount is that not only can you use the supplied tripod, but you can use any photographic tripod with a 3 8 bolt there, okay? And this one is a lot more compact. So when you look at the size of that photographic tripod and the motorized head, it packs up into a very neat size for traveling. So it takes literally less than five minutes just to set up with this tripod. It's just a matter of extending the mount and then using the accessory plate. Just fits on like that and then rotates and locks into place. And that's the mount, it's nice and stable. Now, we now have the option of bolting the motorized head directly onto the tripod, which is how I will be using it, or we can use this additional head like that, and then mount the motorized component on top of that. So I'll go ahead and put that together. 
And there's the motorized head, and this is the top part of the extension mount, which just fits in like that. You can take it off and then screw that to the base of the motorized head. So there it is assembled with the extension head. As I said, you only need that if you're going to be using a telescope. Now you have two clutches. One is for the altitude. You can just loosen it off here and you can then freely move the altitude axis. And you also have the azimuth clutch, which is this knob here. So you tighten it or loosen it and you can just rotate the mount by hand. So what I'm going to do is just set this up with an L bracket and that's how I'm going to use my P900 camera. So what I'll do is just remove this extension and show you how I'm going to be using it with the camera. So I've now fitted the L bracket. Now this is not a supplied accessory. This is something I had separately, but uh, it allows you to fit any DSLR and also the P900 camera. Looking at the unit itself, we have a port for a hand controller, a port for external power, a socket for the snap connector, which will allow this mount to actually control the camera. Now I haven't looked into that too much and I probably won't use that. An on off switch and in the side here is the battery compartment. It just takes eight AA batteries like that. So you can power it with internal batteries or with an external power source. And it has its own Wi-Fi network, which allows you to connect to an app, which I'll show you shortly. It works on Android and also iOS. Works very well, or you can control it via the hand control. So being Skywatcher brand, it uses the SynScan hand controller. And again, this is not necessary and it's not supplied with the unit. I had this on my as EQ6 mount. Now this particular hand controller doesn't have the right connector, but I have the identical hand controller on my Star Discovery mount, which is uh, currently in the aeroplane. So I won't have a chance to try it until tomorrow. But plugging this hand controller into this port allows you to just control the unit as you would for a normal telescope mount. Alternatively, you can use the Wi-Fi connector and the app in the phone or an iPad. So there's the mount with the L bracket and also the P900 connected. Now I've just put it on the telescope tripod to show you how versatile the unit is. And the rated capacity for this mount is five kilograms. So this P900 is under one kilogram, which is well within the limits. In fact, this mount can be used for a small telescope and I'll show you some examples of what this mount could easily support. As you can see, it's a very neat, a very compact unit. I plan to do a lot of testing with this on the west coast of Australia in the next few days. Now, these are two small telescopes. I've got the Celestron Nexstar 4SE. This uh, Skywatcher mount could easily support this telescope and even the Skywatcher Black Diamond ED80. That's just on the Celestron AVX mount. But this is under three kilograms, this tube, so that little Skywatcher mount could easily support that if necessary. However, I only bought it to use with the P900 camera. So here's a comparison of the transportability of the new Skywatcher as GTI mount compared to the Star Discovery Pro mount I've been using in the past. This duffel bag on the right is how I transport the Star Discovery Pro mount, and this is what I used to carry it across to the USA for the eclipse in August. The tripod is in the bottom and the motorized head is inside that toolbox with some extra foam padding and I just carry batteries and a few other accessories so it works fairly well and there's plenty of room on the airplane for that bag but the difference with the new mount is just phenomenal in fact this hard case bag is what I use to carry the P900 and the B700 so traditionally I travel with both bags duffel bag and the hard case now this new Skywatcher mount is so compact, I've been able to fit it in to the same bag as the P900 and the B700. So all I really need is this one bag and a standard photographic tripod, and I can eliminate that one altogether. So just a huge improvement in convenience for transport. 
So there's the mount connected to the tripod and I have the P900 fitted with the L bracket. Now another nice feature is this small bubble level on top which allows you to level the mount perfectly. But I've got it connected and what I'll do now is just show you how the app works. Now the app works with iOS and also with Android. That's my Samsung phone. You can connect and use the app that way. But essentially just to set it up all you need to do in your iOS device is find the correct Wi-Fi network. Now I've renamed mine to SinScan Wolfie, so we'll connect to that. So it's now connected to the mount. We then go into the app itself, SinScan. Now the first time you do this, you've got a connect icon up here, so you've got to connect there to that point. But once you're connected, you have full control over the mount just with this little keypad here. So if I press that one, if I go the other way, completely wireless, which is just fantastic. And I had the mount running all night last night just to test the battery life and it went for more than 12 hours, no problem at all. We can pan up and down. The other thing you can do is adjust the rate of panning at the moment. It's uh, on level nine. If you lower that to say seven, the rate is much slower. And certainly if you're looking at tiny objects and you need absolute precision, you can go down to a much lower level where the mount is actually panning, but it's moving incredibly slow. So let's take a look at the alignment process. So looking at the alignment of this mount, it's important to know which way is the front. Now this knob for adjusting the friction on the azimuth axis, the little clutch knob, is the front. So you must have your telescope or your camera pointing in the same direction. That's important when it comes to alignment, otherwise it's not going to align correctly. We then go into the app, go into settings, and make sure you have your location set correctly. I've just got automatic location. You can select day or night mode or automatic. It just looks dark in night mode. Then you have uh, backlash adjustment, altitude and auxiliary encoders. I leave those turned off. You can go in and adjust the Wi-Fi settings. Now this is important because if you do set it up incorrectly and you forget your password, the only way to reset the mount is to turn it on and leave it untouched for four hours. Don't ask me how I learned that, but um, if you make a mistake with the password, turning it on and leaving it on for four hours untouched, it will reset to the default SSID without any password required. So that's going to work again. Okay, for the alignment. So going into the alignment, you choose the alignment icon. And there are two different types of alignments you can perform. One is a brightest star alignment. The other one is called a north level alignment. So we'll select that option. Now the first thing it asks is for you to select the first star. So let's just pick Venus. And now it's asking for the second star. So let's pick Saturn. Okay, the north level alignment. Now. It's going to use Venus and Saturn for this alignment and it's predicated on the fact that you have now oriented the mount completely level and facing directly north. And we'll do the begin alignment. Level your telescope and point it to north. Next. So it's slewing where it thinks Venus will be based on the original orientation of the mount and your current location and time. So it should be in approximately the right position there and what you can do is zoom in with the camera and then it's just asking you to fine tune and place Venus 
in the center to manually center Venus. So we would just do that like this. Once you've done that, you hit the alignment. It's now going to Saturn, where it believes Saturn will be. Okay, again, it's asking you to manually center Saturn. So we can do that. And the alignment is successful. So from that point, you can then just start observing objects, solar system or stars, double stars, even deep sky objects. So let's just have a look at, for example, what's up there tonight. So let's take a look at Mercury, for example. Just hit go to. It's saying the target is near the sun. Would you like to continue? So it's giving you a warning that because we're doing this in the daylight, that uh, it'll be looking at the sun. So obviously you don't want to do that without an appropriate solar filter. So it's just a nice little safety feature in the app, giving you that warning. And there it is. So that would be looking at Mercury. So I hope to do some testing of this this afternoon. I've got a few days over here on the west coast of Australia. So I plan to use this mount, testing it on sunsets. And I'll report back on the accuracy and how well it compares to the previous Star Discovery Pro mount. And another great feature with this mount is the simple solar tracking mode. So you can just go to tracking and you have the different options there no tracking that would just be for looking at objects such as lighthouses or terrestrial observation sidereal lunar and solar rates that's for looking at the relevant objects in the sky and simple sun tracking now the skywatcher mounts now have this capability where you just point your camera or telescope directly at the sun and hit simple sun tracking okay this one gives you a warning to avoid eye injury only use a certified solar telescope to look at the sun. So that's okay. It's just giving you lots of safety warnings. But the simple sun tracking, dead easy with these mounts. Just point it straight at the sun and hit that and it will keep the sun centered as it moves across the sky. And the final part is just showing you that it can be used with this SynScan hand controller. This is the one from my Star Discovery Pro mount. It does not come with this particular mount, but it certainly does work perfectly. And that just gives you another option instead of using the app. You can just use the, uh, the hand controller if you do have one. So yeah, great mount. Really looking forward to trying it over the next few days.